Hey guys, what's up? So the next poem I'll be reading is 1707. And this is actually a short story. It's called The Hidden Island of Fear. I had a lot of fun writing this short story. It was so cool, but also has such a good message as well. When we're afraid of something, we become comfortable avoiding or ignoring that phobia. And as much as we want to tell ourselves we can get through life with that strategy, it really doesn't help us at all. Whether it's swimming, the fear of heights, of being alone, of sharks, of death, speaking in a group of people, falling in love, or an abusive past, it's time to look fear in the mirror and say, I'm not afraid. <clears throat> the hidden island of fear. The boat is rocking back and forth. I don't know if it's the mixture of the sea and the motion, but I feel like puking my guts out. My buddy's looking at me through the goggles, and I keep looking at the diving suit laid out for me. I shrug my shoulders. I can't. He rolls his eyes, disappointed. I told you I didn't want to come on this trip, but you kept pushing. He responds. You were afraid to get close to your ex. He left. I brought my buddy that's interested in you to help you move on. You haven't said a word to him. You afraid to come on this boat because you refuse to dive in with the sharks. Constantly making comments about the tour guide that isn't on Google. So it must be shady business. You constantly write about living. But how can you when you hold yourself back from everything and refuse to man up? The tour guide walks in and asks if we're ready. He gives this mysterious look at me as they both walk away. We hear two splashes in the water. My buddy's girlfriend walks in and hands me a drink, saying, forget them. I sit by a table with her, sipping on mimosas, as she keeps going on and on about her last breakup, and she knows how hard they can be, letting the words go through one ear and out the other. I see something in the distance. I take the binoculars from the table and hold them close to my eyes, looking through. I see an island. She looks at me confused, but the tour guy said, that there shouldn't be any land for miles. So I say it again, loud enough for the tour guide to hear me. I see an island. He walks this way as she hands him the binoculars. He had to take a double look. That's odd. It's not on the map and I've never seen it before. Her and I exchange looks. After my buddy was done caged in with his friend watching the sharks, they came back on the boat and we both told them about the island. I wanted to go back home well, he wanted to explore the secret island. I didn't push the idea of leaving already, especially since I was being the negative Nancy in the group. So the tour guide tilted sideways and moved to the boat into the direction of the island. As the boat got closer to the sand, my friend threw the anchor down into the water. I kept hearing shouts louder and louder with a familiar voice from the island. My mother. I quickly got off the boat, moving my feet on the shore. The tour guide suggested that we all stay close, especially since he had no knowledge of this body of land. But I was inches away from stepping foot on the island, and the screaming and noise was so vivid. I was so confused. I turned around to tell my friends what I heard, but noticed that the boat was gone. All there was miles and miles of water my hands started to shake, and I sensed a panic attack forming. What the hell is going on? I was alone. I shut my eyes and tried to relax myself, but when I opened them, the boat was still gone, and now they were sharks all around me. I really wanted to scream and run, but then I remember what my buddy told me, to stay still and not to react. I counted to three, and they vanished. I quickly got out of the water and made it to the sand. When I did, everything changed around me. I was in a wooden box. I kept banging as the sand kept falling on me. Oh my God, I'm buried alive. I heard laughing as I started to scream, knowing I'm going to die, suffocate. And then I stopped panicking and I breathed in and out and I found myself back on the island. There were rocks. One had a hole as a shape of a heart. I got closer as I heard my ex-lover say my name. A hand reached out and grabbed my chest and tore out my heart as, I kept, as it kept beating. I fell to the ground as blood kept dripping on the sand, but I just kept running further and further on the island, passing my childhood home where there was mother and father screaming and dishes breaking. I didn't even stop to revisit that nightmare, but I did bump into the tour guide, screaming and shouting, telling him everything that I saw and asking him where the boat was. He hit me with what felt like a pitchfork and I knocked out. I woke up to the real form of the island instead of water, they were flames of fire. Apparently, Lucifer rises a piece of hell on earth to lure weak souls 
that's why I was drawn to it. Tears started to stroll down my eyes, knowing that I would be stranded on this island forever. But I realized every test that was given to me, I passed, overestimating my friends, myself, and the devil. He reached closer to my lips as I pushed him back, and everything went back to its place. The boat is rocking back and forth. I don't know if it's the mixture of the sea and the sun, but I think it's going to be a great idea. My buddy's looking at me through the goggles, and I keep looking at the diving suit laid out for me. I smile and picked it up, removing my shirt. Okay, I'm ready, smiling back at them fearlessly.